All right, so this is a, a Big Hairy Dog webinar. My name is Jeff, and um, and um, this is about uh, Retail Pro version 9 and Prism. So we have both. Okay. Here. here is Retail Pro 9. And uh, here's Prism over here. And I've signed into both because I like to be ready as much as possible. Um, this is a brand new box that we just set up for Prism, so I'm not sure all the settings are 100%, but we're close enough to, to walk you through it and give you an idea of what's going on. So, um, you know, good enough to get going, right? All right, so our basic agenda is receipts and tenders and customers and uh, XE outs, uh, basically, is what we're looking at. So, um, I think most of us are pretty familiar with Retail Pro version 9. Um, and so I'm going to start by going in and um, uh, actually cancel going to Preferences and setting up my XE out, which I checked earlier and was not set up. Uh, but I thought I'd set it up to be the way I kind of used to use it in, when I was in retail. Um, so I'm going to say that we require a closing that we um, uh, do open and closes, uh, and we open the, the drawer. And you can make comments, uh, not require, but allow comments. Uh, it's probably a good thing. So I'm just going to turn those on real quick and come out here and demonstrate the basics of that setting. Uh, don't care. New. Uh, of course, we didn't open the drawer, and that's the whole point of those settings. So it pops a little message that says, hey, your register's closed. You know, please open your drawer. Um, and so we're going to go open the drawer out here. Open drawer. Next. And we've got some weird... Um, got some weird um, settings here with our... our um, Foreign currencies, finish, and our drawer is open. Normally, we wouldn't count two 100s. We'd count actual currencies. I think we all are probably in agreement on that one. Uh, but that's pretty normal for version 9. Um, then we would go into um, receipts. I've, somebody's got some plan markdowns in here that I keep bypassing. I apologize for that. Um, this is a pretty basic screen here. This is our, our defaults. This is where we start when we roll out. Um, and is everybody comfortable with the screens? I could change the size of the screen. And I just realized that maybe I should have been changing the size of the screen. Uh, if, if, if anybody's uncomfortable with it, just let me know in the chat or, or you can, you know, raise your hand or I can, you can, if you're unmuted and you want to talk, you can feel free to do that too. Um, but, um, and everybody should be unmuted at this point, unless you've muted yourself. Um, all right, so let's just go ahead and move forward then. So your basic sale, um, you would normally um, bring some items up. Um, yeah. oh. All right, all right, Nancy, I'm muting you back uh, because I want to make sure that we we don't uh, get too far off track here. Um, so I'm scanning a couple items in to the receipt. We go to tender. Uh, normally the time we would ring some items up we would go to tender we would take some money right pretty straightforward uh, I'm gonna start simple here let's take some cash boom comes up with an amount we could say you know we're typing in 180 pressing enter it figures out our change which is all pretty normal and for some reason we cannot print our receipt that is outstanding uh, normally, we would want to print or update the transaction at this point, and for some reason, I am not able to, and I'm not 100% sure why. That's what happens when you get a new box, right? Um, it is also true that, that you can't abort this sale like I'm trying to do here without without getting into the tenders, so let's go back and just take a look at that. we got to deal with that anyway. Um, if we had to change the tender or uh, wanted to we tender this. We have to click this button, and this button doesn't look like a button. Right here on the screen, it show all tender detail. I'm going to say delete all and close. And 
let's see if we can figure out why. This is not the ideal situation to do any troubleshooting, so I won't waste a lot of time on our um, on our call here. I'm just going to check a couple of things real fast. Uh, everything seems um, pretty good there. Okay. Excellent. Um, all right, so I'm going to loop back around and, and see if I'm not sure why we're not able to print a receipt yet, which is a little awkward. I uh, spent more time on Prism setting that up because I was worried about it, and now, of course, my Retail Pro is not working. Um, in the top, and, and everything about this screen, I should I should pause here because uh, I know that um, nice. Um, uh, every screen could be different out there. So I know that that one of the people that has joined is is a person I'm working with right now, the owner of the company, to set them up, and they're going to go live in the near future. So this is a default screen. But I just want to make sure everybody understands that their screen, because of the functions in Retail Pro that allow us to, to grab and move things around, right, we can reshape the screen to look any way we want to. And so the, the tab path, the order of the fields, the way they move through the screen is determined by our configuring the screen when we go live. So part of the, the setup when we're loading data and getting our ducks in a row is also to get the screens and and printouts all uh, straightened out as well. So, um, so normally, uh, if you track customers, your cursor would start on the customer lookup field, um, and then when you press enter, all right, now it's going down through these other fields here, and then down to the item section. So, uh, I'm going to click back up on the top here. Let's just take a look here and say, um, you know, if I was doing a search for customers that had Smith, for instance, I could type in Smith and press enter. If there was anybody that had Smith in there, they would they would be added. That's nice. We got we got we got Kay Jones. That's excellent because the email name has the word Smith in it. Nice. Um, let's see what we got here that we can in the database that um, can give us a better example of a search. That's uh, pretty special. We've got our max mount turned on on our on our. Um... See, that's pretty odd. We have a couple of Smiths here. And how are we doing? Anybody have any questions so far? I don't see anything in the chat. Um, Let's try that. Let's try this again. So there, there's a couple of things that can happen on a customer lookup. Normally, when we type in something like Smith and it matches more than one record, it gives us a little intermediate search box like that. Yes, thank you. So, um, so this is pretty normal right here. Uh, I typed in a very generic search on purpose, and it gave me a bunch of answers, right? And I could scroll through this and I could pick one. But um, what I would want to point out is that there's um, there's options here. We could go to the date database directly, go to the list, add a new customer right from here. Um, I can also, and this is what gets sort of fallen through the cracks. Let's say I was looking for Anna there, right? Obviously we can see her. I could also go up here and I could change this and I could then redirect this here to whatever I'm looking for, and then click look up again. So I just want to make sure everybody gets that little that little quirky thing right there is very very cool and very powerful. Um, and then you could click select. Now, at the same same time, I could I'm going to back out of this one and start a new one. Yes, we know that. Thank you. Um, 
I could also just click this button right now. The F4 key on the keyboard is the shortcut key. And you could also just click the button there and pop that open. And then you'd be in the database. And uh, this is not really a, a webinar about searching, but there are two search engines. There's a um, there's the quick filter at the top. So I could go in and type, you know, Smith, right? And then I could type uh, Anna here. Now, as I click into the next field, you see it already does the first search for me. And as I press enter, then it, it, it narrows it down. Um, there is also a very nice button, usually called cancel quick filter, which does not appear to be in my screens at the moment, which is kind of annoying. And so we're going to add it. I'm going to click, click cancel quick filter. There's also over on the sidebar menu, the other search engine. Again, we're not really going in deeply to search engines, but here, if we wanted to, for instance, uh, let's say we, we knew that the last name was Smith, but we weren't really sure the first name spelling. We could say Anna or Anna, if you see what I mean. So this is the big brother. The, the filtered view is the more powerful search engine of the two uh, that gives you much more options that would, and of course it'll find the same. That's interesting. So we found uh, two different versions of that. They both actually match that search. So um, pretty cool. Anyway, then when, once you find a record you want, of course, using either search engine, you just click the OK button on the sidebar menu, brings them back to the to the uh, receipt. Um, here at uh, Point of Sale, 99.9% .9 of the time, we are, we're scanning in stuff, right? We type in something, it finds it. Beep, boom, done, right? That's all there is here. We can do searches. So... Uh, if I wanted to search for everything that, that had the word, you know, team in it, for instance, right, um, I could say asterisk team asterisk. In version 9, you can do a search that that would produce everything. Now, in this case, the word team is, is the first word, but not always. So here we have Nike jersey team, right? And then we have, so sometimes it's the first word, sometimes it's not, right? If I were to say team asterisk with, with a wild card at the end, then it would say that team now has to be the first word, if that makes sense to everybody. So, um, and of course here, selecting an item and clicking select. Of course, I picked a, an item that has a lot number. Excellent. Um, somebody must have been playing around with turning on lot numbers in this database. Um, all right. Excellent. So um, I don't know why a jersey would have a lot number. That's kind of odd. But anyway, um, you can also, uh, like if we, if we rang an item up twice, right? Like if we put this one item in twice. Um, I could, and then I could either void it, right? And we've got, <laughs> got reasons turned on for voids, um, which is a feature not common, but it is a feature. Um, so we voided that item. There's also a remove item button, right? And if I click the remove item, it actually takes it off there. I'm going to say that the remove item button, usually for anybody who's bigger store, uh, if you remove items, then you lose the audit trail that there was ever rang up, which means somebody could basically ring up items, take the money, and then remove them, and then ring up another sale, and thus hide their audit trail and, and keep the money. So uh, kind of an unwise strategy to allow people to um, remove items off the screen. However, if, you, if you're, you know, you've got your own shop and you're the, the owner and the employee and you have a few staff members, yeah, you can remove items. It's your, your shop. Um, tendering, um, when we get to tendering here, um, this is kind of opposite. If you were a version eight person, you put the amount in, then you pick the type. This is the other way around. You pick the type, put the amount in. So, uh, we would click on a tender type and it would ask us how much, and we could then put in how much and then click okay. And it would then figure the balance out. We could click on the next tender type, and we could just keep going that way. Um, 
Of course, if you're using credit cards um, and you're integrated, then you wouldn't see that first menu. It wouldn't pop up and ask or suggest Visa, right? It would just uh, pop up like this, and when you clicked OK, it would talk to the um, to the um, the pin pad. Okay, now it's working like a champ. I don't know why. The first time around we weren't. I'm going to say print uh, update, and uh, we don't really have any outstandingly good des designs here, which I will have fixed pretty quickly in the future, but I'm not going to waste our time now. And so, boom, we just printed a receipt. Now, we probably at this point should, should kind of transition over and look at a couple of things in PRISM. Uh, and keep keep us moving forward the right way. So in Prism, um, we have uh, the main menu is down here in the bottom right. So you see you can you can go to different modules by clicking this Retail Pro button on the bottom, and you could go to Store Operations, and there you'd find Inventory and Purchasing, right? And then down here we would come back over to and click Point of Sale, and um, to get to settings or preferences, you go to uh, the uh, administration console, and then all your preferences and settings are all all in here. And I was looking for the XCOUT out settings, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and just pop over to point of sale and uh, and play around with this. So um, in here. If I go to make a new transaction, the screen, of course, looks very different. Um, this is an HTML-based uh, software. It can run in the cloud or it can run on local servers. Um, and usually you want to set this up somewhere like a hybrid version. I, I get it that we all want to be real-time data. Uh, I'm not sure why. It's, it's, it's really not, not the best thing ever. But... Um, you can have both here. You can have a local, like a SQL server that just collects the data on the local computer and then feeds it back almost real time within seconds back to the um, main office. That way, if you lose your internet connection and you have a local SQL server running like a MySQL type database running on the local box and you, you lose internet, you don't go down, right? That's kind of the point. If you're in the cloud and, and you lose internet for a second, then you're you go down for a second. Hopefully, you come back right back up. Anyway, in, in here, um, if we're going to sell something, we need to ring it up, right? So we would scan an item. Be we would put the item on the receipt, right? Just like just like the other one does, right? So we scan some items in. Um, we can do searches. Now I don't think we can do. Let's see here if this even works on here. It's been a while since I played with this. No, it doesn't. No. So if we want to do a search for an item here, wow, it did work. That's that is cool. All right, excellent. So so um, I'm going to select an item and bring it back. So I did a wildcard search there, and I did a pretty wide open wildcard search. I just said you know asterisk wildcard is is an asterisk anything with an as next to each other, which is pretty wide. There's a lot of words that happen to contain those two letters next to each other. So that was easily going to be successful. Um, I wonder if we try the same thing we just did a minute ago. If we say team asterisk, what do we get? Seems a little sluggish doing that search, but it gives us exactly the same results, right? And of course, there's quite a few items here. These are both um, pretty big searches. So if we wanted to down arrow through these, we could. Um, not that we really want to waste any time doing that. Um, okay, are we done? Good. So I'm just going to select an item and bring it back. Um, and nice, I picked <laughs> picked one that needs a serial number. <laughs> I think we all get that serial number tracking and a lot number tracking, just so that since they popped up here and they're bugging us a little bit, serial number tracking is like handguns and like bicycles in the state of California. There are places that require serial number tracking of certain items. Uh, sometimes it's art, high-end art. Uh, lot number tracking is uh, mostly pharmaceuticals, things that expire that are required by law to be tracked. Um, 
you know, I have set up a lot of people that have product that expires, uh, but nobody wants to type in the expiration date of a muffin. You know, uh, you only do it if you were selling drugs and you had to track it by law. Um, you know, I've had people say to me, hey, if I want to know the expiration date, I'll go look at the shelf and pull the ones off that are expiring, right? Um, anyway, so that's what those are. Uh, and I apologize for having those things pop up so much. Um, in here, if we want to look up a customer, uh, over here we have a place to look that customer up. And we could type in, you know, Smith and see what happens. And it finds the same kind of customers we found over in uh, version 9. Now, this prism, just so we're on the same page here, this prism is connected to this version 9 database. So the... the the ODBC uh, database, the Open Database Connectivity is ODBC. That's the standard for databases. Uh, but the database is an Oracle database, and it, and it is the version 9 database that we are using for version 9. So they have the same data, if you see where I'm going. So um, certainly we could um, we could click on that and, and would accept one of those. Or we, if we wanted to, we could... Um, uh, let's move this over a little bit. It being HTML, see it, it just resizes based on whatever screen space you have. So if we if we needed to, we could also um, delete. Interesting. Okay, so if we go in here, what do we get? All right. I guess we'll just pick Shane here. Uh, you can see their details. You can pull up the customer's information. Everything is HTML now, so uh, you have to have a button. You can remove them. You can see transaction information. There's a ton of stuff. Let's get through a basic transaction, right? So we go to tender. Uh, in here, we're going to take the same thing. We're going to take cash. We've got $242. I'm gonna, uh, I could type in here, take an amount. I could just type in 250 and click take. It's going to ask me how I want to give the change of 702 back. And I'm just going to say, it says give cash, right? I, I could go down to my tender type at the bottom there and I could change that. But I'm just going to say give, you know, and then I'm going to say print update. And it should give us a, a copy of the receipt here. Yeah, so I set the receipt to preview earlier so we wouldn't have to herk and jerk around with any hard copies. Uh, pretty nice. I just sent that to a, a printer that does not exist. We'll be canceling that. All right, so then it, it resets to the screen, and and we are in the same same place we were before so um, basic point of sale so to speak um, now um, here we have also an advanced search button that I was going to click on earlier but I'm trying to be a little bit paced about how we do this and in here in the advanced search thing we, we get to choose what field we want to search by so I could take any of these fields and I could add them to the screen and then do a search by them right so we could say team now right and say search and it would find everything that contains the word team um, no records found interesting really <laughs> let's try um, oh and you know it could be it could be that there are no 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 uh, no versions of team in that huh Maybe I should try it in this field, huh? No records found. Swing and a miss. All right. All right. Let's um, let's just go ahead and click search. Obviously, if you click search without any field in there, you pretty much find everything. So I'm not sure why we weren't being successful there. Um, 
So jacket definitely works. Let's uh, clear this uh, and let's go back and say description one and say jacket or just jack search. Interesting. So there is something broken on my search engine. I'm going to have to go tweak that later on. Um, so in, in this mode here, when our searches are working a little bit better, you should be able to just check off what you want. So that's kind of an, a nice difference. I guess you can still do the same thing and choose edit items in, in version 9, though, said technically. So um, here we have multiple pages. So I just put the items on my on my uh, transaction. Um, of course, I have to say one of the advantages of Prism is that it doesn't care what the hardware is. So this could be run on a uh, on anything. An Apple uh, doesn't care what the operating system or the um, or the um, the browser is. So you know we're using um, Chrome or Internet Explorer. I'm not sure which and uh, and it doesn't care. So this could run on anything. Now, to have a printer, you need a, a, a printer, uh, a little proxy set up, this little guy down here. And so you'd have to have a PC that could run the, that. That that piece of software doesn't really run in, um, in an Apple environment. But, you know, with one PC uh, someplace, you could have that running and have your printers connected to that, and they could be strategically around the store. Right. So um, you could get by without even actually having a, a hard point of sale and just having like iPads if you really wanted to. And then just walk over and pick your receipt up. Uh, or you could even email the receipts, too. That's an option built into Prism. So maybe you don't even actually want to print the receipts. Um, all the transaction details are here. Um, you, anything you can do in version 9, you can do the, the fees, shipping, associates, uh, price levels, discount, taxes, notes. It's all, it's all right in, in the transaction details. And every item, when you click on the item itself, you then have the ability to look at the details, and you have all the same functionality that you have in version 9. Here's multiple tabs for item details, discount, shipping, associates, item notes, on-hand quantities. So... Um, So very similar functionality on both sides of the fence, shall we say. Um, and Prism has come a long way. It's not standalone yet. It, it's getting close. Uh, it does have the ability to do a lot of the other functions, purchase orders and enter items now, and and uh, things that it did not have the ability to do uh, in the previous generations of it. But it's not quite standalone. So just FYI as far as where we are on that. Um, all right, so let's go. Let's go wrap this up so we have a little bit of. Um... So let's go to tender here, and let's say that we are going to change the tender type to uh, credit card, and we're going to select a card type here, and um, take that. Boom. And uh, print update. And let's back out to the main point of sale menu. And let's go to X out and let's see this out. And next. So similar functionalities here. We haven't Z'd out the other one. We should go Z out the other one too. Uh, but but as you can see, similar going to be similar functionalities here uh, with um, nice. Now this is HTML based. So you know I come up through the ranks with um, with versions of Retail Pro from version five up, and of course I want a down arrow here. And when I down arrow, you can see the cursor doesn't move at all. So in the HTML place now, we are pretty much over to tabs. Tabs are how you move around now. It's more like a true Windows environment, if you know what I mean. 
but you know, next, um, we have one credit card. Nice. We can check that off. Um, we don't have any other, any other forms of uh, non-currency. Yes. It does its little reconciliation, shows us that we're, we might be over a little bit, um, you know. And um, can I even send this to the screen? I thought I set it up to preview, but apparently it's not. But the Zout looks the same as it does in version 9. It's just that the Zout functionality really hasn't changed. Uh, and that being said, let's let's hop over to version 9 here and let's back up to the main menu and go register, open, close, close drawer. Now, in version uh, 9, the Z out to close the drawer, because of the settings I turned on, it's showing the drawer that I opened earlier right there. And that's why I like that setting, honestly. I have had a lot of clients that choose to keep running the X Z out the way they did in version 8. Uh, and if we turn those settings off, this filter comes back to being fully editable, and it, you have to edit it when you run the uh, closing report, just like you do in V8. And you can run it for the whole store, for a workstation. You can run it for different levels. I have some clients that actually prefer just to Z out the whole store. They just take the two drawers, dump them together, count them all together, and Z them out. That's an option. Version 9, you can pretty much do whatever you want to do. Um, I just like this option here because we never had this in V8. We, we always had that ability in V8 to just count the whole drawer, filter it how we want to, right? So here, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and, and count this. Let's just keep it simple here. Let's just put it 600 in the top there. And uh, we don't have any of the other foreign currencies, so we'll click Next. Uh, we did not do any non-currency, so we'll click Next. Here is a great place where we could write a comment if we want to. Um, obviously if there's a reason, if there's something off that, um, that we know the answer to, obviously we should put a comment in there and, uh, not force the reconciliation team to, to rediscover what we already know. Right. Um, so this is a little over, a little less over than we were a minute ago, but still over. Um, we go ahead and click next. And of course in here we would normally click print. Uh, I'm going to say open the report and this is, this is pretty much the same from version 5 up, um, not much has changed on this uh, on this particular document. Um, it always starts the same way with your filter criteria on top. This particular version has those uh, labels on the left, which I usually take off if I'm going to use it. But, um, but below that, you have your filter criteria, which is critical. Um, no matter what version of Retail Pro you're on, if it doesn't balance, the first thing you should look at is the filter criteria. Make sure that it was filtered correctly. And that's kind of the beauty of the open-close function of, of 9 Series, is that when you close the drawer, you're closing the drawer that you opened. So you're not filtering to a date or a time or or a cashier or, or a workstation. It, you're opening, you're closing that drawer, which is nice. Anyway, uh, of course, the... Um, Sales section is, is, as we know, a pat on the back. Uh, the sales is what we got credit for in sales. That doesn't mean we, we actually took that much money. If somebody closed out a special order today that they put a deposit on a month ago, today they just came in and picked it up. They didn't give us any more money. That counts as a sale because we delivered it today, but it's, it's deposit used, right? It's, it's, it's money that has been sitting around for 30 days that... Uh, that we're now just choosing to say that's a sale. So anyway, um, uh, we got our normal breakdowns. We got, well, right there, I guess I should point out the minus section always shows up in a, uh, in an X out. Uh, and, and what that does is it adjusts the total for actual cash flow. So, so right there, it says cash flow total, right on the screen. It says cash flow total. And let's just go ahead and, Highlight it if we say do a little 
little search function here and you can see right there it says cash flow total right above my little box now and highlighted in red and if we had anything that was funny money like a store credits a charge account um, a deposit being used you can see net deposit used right in the middle here um, those get subtracted back out of the total now in this case our, our, our sales and our cash flow are balance 163.84 both lines the same but um, there are many times when we take a deposit on a special order uh, where if we're selling bigger products like kayaks or or stoves or something like that you know they're they're built in we might take a large deposit of several thousand dollars on an order and then when we deliver the order several weeks later and we we, we uh, we then say this is done, we, we get credit for the sale. So uh, in that scenario, we would we would get the cash flow, we would have a positive cash flow uh, on the day we take the deposit, right? But that wouldn't count as a sale. So our, in that day, our cash flow would be over compared to our sales. And of course, the day we redeem it, it would be reversed, right? Our sales would be greater and our cash flow would be less. I think we all get that, right? So. The point is you don't balance your drawer to your sales, you balance your drawer to your cash flow. This is a tender reconciliation device, right? That's what this report does. It reconciles the drawer. So, um, all right, so anyway. Um, and yes, I see your question there. Sorry about that, Nick, I missed it. Do, we, do, we, do you not need to use asterisks is the question. And that has to do when we were doing the searches. Um, and I think that had to do with um, the prism one. Now the asterisk is a wild card, so you don't need an asterisk if you have an exact match. Anytime you're doing a search, if you know exactly that the phrase you're searching for is what you're typing, you're 100% positive you don't need an asterisk. If you're not sure, if you're not 100% sure, then you need an asterisk. So uh, to clarify that real fast, um, and I'm just going to pull up Notepad. I'm not going to go get into something else here that's uh, that's going to take too much time. But um, you know, if we know it starts with for searching purposes, right? If we know it starts with team, we could say team asterisk, right? If we know it ends with team, we could say asterisk team. If we don't know or we're not 100% sure, then we should say asterisk team asterisk, right? Or asterisk value asterisk. That would find all, all references of that item. So, um, so anyway, um, back to XE Outland, right? Um, so below that, we get our little breakdowns. You see there's a receipt count breakdown, and there's a, uh, um, a discount breakdown. There is also can be a fee type breakdown. We didn't take any of those, so uh, it's not really showing those. It only inserts things that are relevant. So anyway, down here you see the US dollars, and since this is a Z out, an X out is just a lighter version of a Z out, right? An X out would just show paid in, paid out, net, boom, done. This, of course, because we opened a drawer, right? It knows that that uh, we began the drawer with 200 bucks. And so it says, hey, paid in with 50, paid out zero. We didn't give any change back. We didn't over tender that when we split tendered it. So, uh, so paid in with 50, paid out was nothing. We began with 200. Our net should have been 250. We, we counted 600. Therefore, we're a little over, like 350 bucks. And, uh, and then down below here, um, it says our leave is zero. Now that's a, that's a, that's a, an error on my fault. Uh, I should have predefined the leave to be 200 bucks, uh, and, or, and, or I should have typed it out on the fly. Right. So what it really should be saying is the leave or the float for tomorrow's business is to the 200 bucks I opened with. Therefore the deposit would be 400, not 600. And that's just, uh, that'd be human error. That'd be user error. Does happen sometimes. Um, below that, then it's giving us our, 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 our closing and our opening count, right? Then it goes into 
all the other tenders that were used. In this case, there's only one, the visa that I took, right? But this would list, if you had store credit, every form of tender has a section, and all the sense sections in, in the doc designer are designed to be removed if blank, right? So it's not going to print out 30 different tenders, only to say that 29 of them are zero, right? It's only going to print the ones out that are relevant. In this case, we use credit cards and cash. So cash printed and credit cards are printing. When credit card prints, it prints all cards, then it prints each individual card type beneath it. So if you have Visa and Master and Discover, you'll have three sections underneath the all cards. The all cards would be the grand total, and each section will be separately reconciled beneath it. And it looks like in our preferences, we have the listing turned on for credit cards. So it's printing out the one credit card we did there, but with the name and the last four, you see the 1742 in the far right-hand side. Uh, can we make that bigger? Let's see. No, it won't let me go there, will it? Uh, it's a nice try, though. No, it won't let me go there either. Nice. Yeah, we can't go to whole page because this document is, like, really tall, so it would make it, like, microly small. But... Anyway, you, you see the 1742, right? We use this as a little pointer, right? Right there, you see this Anna Smith 1740. That, that 1742 is the like the last four digits of the card number. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little cough getting over that. Um, then we have down below um, over shorts uh, and. Uh, some grand totals and some loyalty things. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with the XCO now in version nine. We can put in like a little summary report by department. Uh, it's got a lot of new schema sections in there that are just extra. Loyalty points is a big thing that the Retail Pro designed in version nine that you can turn on. Uh, it's an internal loyalty program, so there are a lots of other programs out there that also we can integrate with, and, and there's a few of those going on right now. Uh, integrations to some loyalty programs. Um, by the way, if you're in preview mode and you're in a version 9 user, um, you might want to right click and turn on large buttons. Just makes it easier to see what the damn buttons are. In this case, it's a person exiting and we're going to say exit, so we're going to say exit and it pops out. Then we're here at the same screen we were at before, before we printed this. And so if we click finish, then that brings us around to done, closed. So, uh, and again, I like this functionality because it mimics a, a real cash register like I used to use when I was in retail. And we're again, not able to open the drawer. Now, not all of these features are in Prism. They're working very hard to get Prism up to the point where it is the same as Retail Pro 9. And it's getting very close. Uh, it, it, it lacks some of the more advanced features and not all the functionality is yet in Prism. But It'll be there in the very near, near future, in the next year or so. It'll it'll be there, and it'll then eventually be able to stand alone, and we won't need a Retail Pro database any longer. Uh, or optionally, we could continue to use a Retail Pro database, so that if you're if you're transitioning to Prism, right, you could keep using your Retail Pro 9 server. You could continue to run things on the back end the same way, start converting the stores to Prism. There are a few changes in the way sales orders are processed, and a few other things that this webinar does not really go into but um, but certainly if you're if you're looking at that you want to get a, uh, a demonstration with a sales rep and you want to be able to hack around in there and, and, and ask the right questions that pertain to your business all right so um, so the other things that I'm showing on our list here um, I got customers, I got uh, troubleshooting, I got disbursements. We have not talked about disbursements. Um, we have not talked about the XE out tricks. Um, so I guess we should look at that real quick here. And I have no idea what how much data we have. So let's just take an X out. Let's take and how brave do we feel here, right? Um, let's go ahead and say undefined. Let's get rid of this here altogether. And get rid of this, get rid of this. Um, 
And let's see, let's say run. Do you want to save this? No, not really, thanks, but no, not really. Um, okay. Um, and that is not what I'm looking for, but we're close. Okay, yeah, there we go. So flash sales right next to it. Uh, so here we are in the in the in the X out in version nine, right? And uh, there's a flash sales button right here that takes us into this this little flash sales thing. Uh, now you have some options here on the sidebar where you can shift it around. Obviously, this is a um, sandbox, meaning that it's a testing environment used for testing Retail Pro, right? And uh, Obviously, we put all the sales in on Wednesday in one department, <laughs> so uh, it's the data is a little skewed from what a real environment would be. It's kind of embarrassing, but there you go. Um, but you can flip through different versions of um, Yeah, apparently in the morning too. All right. Disbursements, are they turned on? Hang on a second. Okay, our favorite tech Ken had some questions, but we um, we pushed him off for for the moment. And um, real quick, let's talk about disbursements. Now, disbursements are in both versions. Uh, Prism has disbursements as well, um, and disbursements are actually pretty cool. So, if you have never seen a disbursement, this might be an interesting thing to look at real briefly. Um, with disbursements, you have to have reason codes. So, for instance, here, um, because the cash drop function has no reason code, and it is part of disbursements, by the way, that function is disabled right now in version 9. Uh, because the drawer open has a reason, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's enabled, right? Now, our disbursements per paid in and paid out uh, are, are, have reason codes, right? So, let's go take a quick look at this. Now, little compare and contrast here because anybody who's been using Resale Pro for a while already understands, nice, I guess I need to go open the drawer. That that happens to me quite a bit, more than you know. Um, but a fee type is a way that we modify the drawer for some reason. So um, we could have reasons why we would take, um, like I've seen a real common one is, is that customers are buying something and um, and they have an old store credit from a previous system and Retail Pro is new and we come down here and we say, hey, take off that, that 40 bucks, right? And then a reason code pops up and in the reason code we, we've added old store credit, right? So um, I'm just gonna click on other. So you see I took a, a, a $60 subtotal with $4.80 tax, took 40 bucks off, Right, and I'm left with the 2480 now. So that, that's a fee type. Now, we've used fee types for, for what we do here with disbursements. But disbursements is only about taking cash in and out of the drawer. So in this case here, what I just did with a fee type, I could not do that with disbursements. It does not modify transactions, okay? It's just the part where we take money in and out of the drawer, right? That's all disbursements are. So let's cancel this and uh, let's go. Ah, uh, yep, that's fine. So there's a disbursement button on the sidebar menu, and it could be in list view, form view, it could be a button on the screen, it could be on the top, right? That's all changeable. So I'm gonna say paid out, and we're paid out uh, cash. The amount we're gonna take out is uh, 20 bucks, right? Now, I don't have to type it in negative here. This disbursement is the paid out function. It knows it's going out of the drawer, follow? So then down here, I might say, you know, miscellaneous shops, supplies, whatever, and click OK. 
and then it would it would print us a little disbursement receipt, which could then go into the the drawer saying that we took out um, we took out 20 bucks by disbursement paid out fee type. So it's it's actually inserting into the fee field. That's where it's it's still being tracked. Uh, but there's also a disbursement reason that's not present on this design that's actually being tracked as well and is reportable. That's the, the critical part, I guess. And then, of course, when they bring the items back and they want to give put the change back in the drawer, we would come back and do the same thing. We'd say we're putting in whatever, $3.28, and we would want to have the same kind of reason codes in here, right? Change from purchase, I guess. And uh, OK, and then print that receipt, staple the two together, right? with the receipt from whatever you had to go get and you have a so it's pretty straightforward the disbursement is just a more structured way that means we don't have to put in minus 20 bucks and worry about forgetting to put the minus in and thereby throwing the drawer off 40 bucks so um, anyway so that that is the disbursements function and I believe um, I haven't played with it to be honest but let's go take a look right no time like the present um, right new disbursement paid out right so disbursement reason say you see we're connected to the same database here same reason codes right miscellaneous um, Nice. So it looks like I have some workstation preferences to get that design to print, but um, as you saw before, that that print job is not an overly exciting print job. Just says we took twenty bucks out of the drawer, and all both those, uh, both Prism and Retail Pro have a designer tool. The designer tool in Prism is. Uh, not as friendly as it is in, in version 9. If you've played with the doc design tool, um, and, and the XC out is an intimidating design, and even for those who are good at it. Um, but the receipt is not that bad, and, and, and certainly if, you're, if you've hacked around in the, in the doc designer tool in version 9, you could easily go and modify one of these to print for disbursements. And there is a separate preference set up for disbursement. Uh, print jobs in, in your workstation preferences so you could define that and, and get that handled as well um, the the HTML version it, it, it does take a little bit of getting used to and I would I would say that if you haven't played with it uh, you might want to get some some guidance on that and that's not really what we're about today but um, but hopefully that gives you guys an overview of basic point of sale uh, in version 9 and in prism um and XV outs um I, we have like five minutes before we're supposed to adjourn uh is there any questions is there anything i i did not go over that somebody would like me to go over specifically you can answer in the chat or you can actually i can unmute anybody who wants to be unmuted uh <laughs> All right, so we've got uh, we've got uh... All right, well, um, I'm gonna say thank you if there's no questions and there's nothing else going on here I'm gonna say thank you very much for for taking the time out of your day I know you guys are all busy and I hope this was helpful and beneficial um, and give you guys some insight into what's going on with retail pro and with prism and um, that being said, uh, I'm going to tell you guys to have a good day. All right, then. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up then. And you guys all have an excellent day today. All right. Thanks very much.
Bye-bye.